Welcome everybody to Ensuring Timely and Accessible Learning Materials in Education, today's webinar. It's one o'clock, so I just want to give it maybe, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds to uh, allow everybody to join in. I did see the list that I do uh, appreciate. I do see a lot of uh, familiar faces uh, from the K-12 space and higher ed space, so appreciate you guys being here. It's good to, to, to uh, see your name. Oh, okay, there's another couple seconds here. I do see some people still coming in. Okay, I think we're going to get started. So again, this webinar today is on ensuring timely and accessible learning materials in education. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Jeff Julian. I'm a senior account executive here uh, at Alliant. Been here over 16 years and I solely focus on the education space. So this is my world. This is where I spend every day, all day dealing with ensuring that state departments of education have the printed uh, needs or the digital needs. So Braille, large print, accessible PDF, MathML, DAISY audio. I mean, whatever the format is, is what I'm going to be helping them with. Uh, same thing with uh, higher ed schools. So we deal with a ton of higher ed schools. Um, I currently deal with publishers and assessment providers. And uh, like I said, this is my uh, world. I spend all day dealing with the edu space. So today I'm gonna come up with a little bit of agenda. So I'm gonna run through um, some market re research. I'm going to run through some challenges, which I'm sure we're all gonna agree upon. I'm gonna run through some stats that I found, which are pretty interesting, which is kind of why we're here today. Uh, so I'm gonna run through some stats that I found um, as well as I'm going to run through a demo, which is going to be kind of the bulk of this webinar, is I'm going to show you a specific tool from Alliant that can really help you speed up that conversion or that transcription process in a wide variety of formats. So um, here we are. So market research, uh, the numbers. Um, the, the, the enrollment is big. The numbers are big. In the post-secondary uh, world, there's 25 plus million students. And, you know, from that, you know, they come from 6,500 schools, the elementary and secondary 61 million students. And, you know, broke that down a little bit further into, you know, K to eight, 42 million. Uh, and in the uh, secondary being the nine to 12 enrollment, 19 million. So the people we are trying to reach and the students we're, we're reaching, there's a lot of them. So we want to make sure that we fully understand uh, who we're dealing with and why we're dealing with it. Some more numbers, um, you know, approximately 13%, 32 million of all Americans have some sort of visual impairment and vision is, is, is the most, and vision is the most dominant one. Approximately 80 million Americans live with a disability. So again, um, the people we are trying to serve, um, the, it's a very large number. So walking through some challenges, um, you know, we sent out a survey to many disability offices across North America with a number of questions, but these are the ones that kind of stood out to me and kind of ones I want to address because I do feel uh, that they would resonate uh, with, with, with mostly everybody on the call today. So uh, the first one, is your accessibility budget adequate? 70% of people said no. I think that's alarming. I think, I know budgets are tight, um, which is why providing um, our students with choice is a challenge. So we wanna work on budgets. We wanna get those budgets early. We wanna understand what accessibility costs. Are you underserving your students who are blind or have low vision? You know, this one here, is a little bit more even, but I think it's still alarming because 52% of people said they're underserving. So half of the students are being underserved. So I think we, we should really have a hard look at that. The third one, do you need material transcribed faster? I mean, this is the biggest one. I would say this is why we're here today. I'm gonna to show you a tool that can kind of help you speed up that process. Because the end goal, we want our students to succeed. We want equal access. We want them to learn 
just like everybody else. So we need to make sure that we have the material to those students in hand on time in even better ahead of the class. Uh, so then they can review the material before walking into the class, just like everybody else. Again, some more challenges. Um, you know, the turnaround time was not workable for us. It's a hodgepodge process. The time and effort required is significant. Accessibility takes time. And I think, I think I can't reiterate that enough. I mean, accessibility takes time. And time is of the essence. Students need material faster. I mean, I think we've kind of covered all of these points, but I think the end goal here for all of us uh, is to get material to students uh, quicker and in the format of their choice, which I think is really very important too. Some more challenges, high cost. I mean, I think I covered this on the last slide, but accessibility can be expensive. So we wanna make sure that we are talking to the professors, understanding what books they're, they're, they're taking. Let's get ahead of the game. Let, let's try converting this stuff way ahead of time so that you know the students are not waiting. They're gonna have the materials on time. And we totally understand that most departments have a small team or maybe even no team. You know, maybe you're the maybe you're a school that has a luxury of having a very large team, but most are not. So, so one particular accessibility request could eat could eat up a full time staff for an entire semester. So we want to make sure that we look at that quality of source files. I would encourage you to um, go get the PDFs from the publisher, and even if you can request an EPUB file as well, that's going to help speed up the process. So it's going to help get the material to students quicker and be a little bit cheaper. So the quality of the source file is extremely important. Um, receiving the syllabus from the professors. That's another one um, which is extremely important. And I know a lot of you do a really good job of this. But for those who are kind of new coming into the space, um, getting the syllabus is extremely important. Because what that'll do is that'll give us the ability to follow the student syllabus. I mean, if we could get the entire project to you uh, ahead of time, we're going to do that. But if you come to us at the last minute, which often happens, we're able to ship or batch ship certain materials to the school according to the student syllabus. And quite honestly, we don't want to be transcribing material that's not going to be covered in class anyways. That's a waste of time for everybody and a waste of money for everybody as well. So having the syllabus, knowing what's required, when it's required is extremely important. And complicated subject or STEM um, material. I mean, that's another pain point. I mean, I don't expect many, many schools to be able to do complicated music uh, or Nemeth Braille. Um, so, so that's definitely somewhere where we can help. And to reiterate, this takes time. So, so get these out, know the books, know the professor, get the syllabus early. And the shift to six to eight week semesters that's a struggle. Um, you know, accessibility was always hard to get done within a entire semester, which is like four months. Now we have to do it within six to eight weeks. So that is a struggle. So that's even, you know, a, a um, more of a challenge, which means, you know, you got to get to these professors, build that relationship nice and early. So now I'm going to run through some stats, which I think are uh, very interesting. Um, I think this will kind of explain to you how blind or low vision students are navigating your website, uh, how they are ingesting documents. Um, so uh, do you use a screen reader due to a disability? 90% of people saying yes. So when people are searching documents, when people are searching your website, 90% of them are using a screen reader. So we got to make sure that we are uh, testing with a screen reader. Which of the following is your primary screen reader? JAWS, you know, 40%, NVDA, you know, is catching up. I think, you know, soon NVDA uh, being my favorite reader uh, is going to sur sur surpass JAWS. Uh, and NVDA is a free download. So I always like telling people who haven't used a screen reader or, you know, what would my website or what would my document sound like using JAWS or NVDA? Download NVDA, run it. It's very simple to use, uh, you know, run it on your website, run it on your document. I think you're going to quickly understand how someone with no vision is going to navigate your site and how that document or how that web page uh, sounds. And I think it really puts things uh, into perspective. 
do you use a braille output with your screen reader? So this being like a dynamic braille display. So some students who want uh, digital braille can buy a dynamic braille display or a refreshable braille display. And basically what happens is the file can run through it and the pins uh, refresh themselves as kind of the text flows through. So this is another way that, you know, a student could navigate your website or navigate um, your document. Which best describes your feelings regarding the accessibility of web content over the previous year? 34% web content has become more accessible. Great. Uh, but the bigger number, 46, call it 47%, web content accessibility has not changed. And then 18%, web content has become less accessible. I mean, I think these are alarming. I think we should all go back, do an audit on our site. Let's figure out what our document health is. Let's figure out where our website is at. I mean, I do think with the new Title II uh, rule, um, you know, these numbers are going to change drastically because a lot of us are going to be on the hook to make sure that these are all addressed. So, um, you know, the, these to me, I think are alarming, but I think we're going to see a drastic change uh, over the next two years. Which of the following do you think would have the bigger impact on improvements to web accessibility? I mean, 14% better assistive technology. I mean, I think the assistive te technology we have are great and only going to get better. Uh, but the big one is, you know, better web websites, more accessible websites, an, an alarming, you know, 86%. So, I mean, let's just, let's check our website. I think we should all go back, check our sites to see uh, where we're at. When trying to find information on a lengthy web page, which of the following are you most likely to do first? I love this one. So how a screen reader is going to navigate your website or even a document is they can navigate through headings. So 71% navigate through the headings on a page. So, I mean, let's ensure that our, that our proper document structure is there. I mean, if, if let's take a document for, for instance, and, and, and the user is trying to get to page 20. I mean, if we don't tag it accordingly, the screen reader is going to have to read from page one to 19 before they get to where they want to be on page 20. Versus if it was transcribed or remediated properly with the proper uh, heading levels, they could just skip content and skip directly where they want to be. So I think, you know, let's, let's pay attention to our heading levels. Let's pay attention on how we're uh, uh, creating documents. Okay. So all that being said, kind of brings us to a potential option for you. Uh, you know, a tool that Alliant built called Commonlook Online, um, which is the tool I'm going to kind of walk through a few slides for, and then I run through a couple a couple demos for you to kind of show you the tool in action and, sh and show you how easy it is um, to use. So this tool kind of combines a high level of automation. Um, so it will uh, 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 detect certain regions, and I'll walk through that in a second. But it's, I think the strongest point is it is intuitive. It's simple to use. So anybody could kind of pick it up and use it without a ton of training. And it's really geared for those last minute day-to-day -day documents, those tests, exams, handouts, stuff like that, that you just need to get done quickly. I mean, it's a waste of time sometimes to sending it out, getting a quote from three vendors, getting it back, I mean, getting a PO. Sometimes we don't have the luxury of time. So if we had something in-house that we could just rely on and depend on and throw some documents through um, would be super helpful. So I'm going to run through uh, this with you today. Where I see a good fit, I mean, I think the list goes on and on, but, you know, I did want to point out a few areas. So in the post-secondary world, I do find that the disability offices could, could, could greatly benefit from this tool. You know, obviously assistive technology departments, digital teams, you know, in marketing, professors, department heads, that's where I think, you know, it would be a really nice fit. If we could get the professors on board to think about accessibility, that would mean a lot of the burden or a lot of the work at the end, which is always taking the, uh, the most time, it'll alleviate us from that. So it'll all save us time if we could get more people on board. Um, state Departments of Education, so the K-12 space, I mean, obviously, State Departments of Ed, 
uh, schools for the blind, TVIs, I think is a big one. I think if we could get these, uh, you know, TVIs uh, using the actual tool, I think that'll save them a ton of time. So I think we all understand and we all know that they go way and beyond in ensuring that their particular student has what they need to succeed. So, um, you know, I, I could see that helping them for sure. Uh, and educators, of course. Okay, so a little bit more about the tool. So uh, on the left-hand side, you're gonna see the input format. So what can I put into the system? Well, I could put in a PDF. I could put in a Word file. I could put in an EPUB file. I could put in a NIMAS file. And then you'll see on the right-hand side, the accessible output. Those are all the outputs I can get from the actual tool. So if I put in a PDF, oh, great. I can get large print, I can get Braille, I can get PDF, I can get e-text. Uh, and so on. I mean, the list goes on here, as you can see on the screen. I don't think I need to tell you all of it, but I think the message is, you know, it's it's a tool that can service many different alternative formats. So it's a tool that can help many different students depending on what uh, alternative format they are requiring. So a little bit about the output formats from the tool. Uh, the first one is reflow to large print. The key thing with this one is not only is it large print, but it's an also an accessible Word file. So, so it does give you all the capabilities or all the features of a large print file, but it also is usable by a screen reader like JAWS and, and, or NVDA. And what I mean by reflow, because you, you may not know that term, um, anybody who's on this call who's met with me for sure knows what this is. But for those who don't, if you were to come to me and say, hey, Jeff, I have this uh, document I need in large print, I would say, OK, we could blow it up, which I think is very common, blow it up on 11 by 17 pa paper. Um, but it but it still has all of the limitations that it did in the past. You're just making it bigger. You're not getting to one true font. Uh, you're still bringing over, you know, the poor contrast, the white space, the underlining, uh, the italics, all that stuff that makes it difficult for a low vision student to use is what you're bringing over. So when I say reflowed, this is here is a linearized version. We repurpose. Uh, we basically redesign the entire document to ensure that it's 18 point uh, with 20 point font header. So it's basically a whole new book, um, but in truly large print. Accessible PDF, um, self-explanatory, e-text. And one really awesome feature is that it exports Braille and it exports Nemeth Braille. So that's a, that should be uh, a huge time saver for, for everybody on this call. <clears throat> okay, so how does the tool work? Well, um, it basically the AI tries to detect or attempts to detect all of the page elements. So all of the headers, the footers, the tables, the charts, the graphs. Uh, reading order, connections between, uh, you know, tables and lists. So it's going to try to detect all of that and then get us to kind of go in and kind of fine tune it um, to ensure that what the system picked up is in fact uh, accurate. There's also warnings. So the system is smart enough to understand that things look out of place, seem, things don't seem right. So, so it will draw our attention to certain things that, you know, I will show you. And, uh, you know, they are super helpful because um, we want to make sure everything is as accessible as possible. Uh, support for math. So I did say that it does do Nameth uh, for Braille. So that is great. Um, but what it does is it auto detects the math equations. And then from there, you can, you know, export to Word. You can export to Nameth Braille. You can, there's a PDF functionality to it. Or you can export to e e-text. So again, the flexibility is there for many different use cases. And obviously it does chemistry uh, as well, very similar to the math. So I won't kind of read everything on this slide here, but it, the functionality is exactly the same. So export to Word, uh, Braille, PDF, and e-text, it, it has exactly the same functionality. But the good news is uh, it does chemistry and it does do equations, which is pr pretty neat. And of course, the last slide is uh, support for fillable forms. So I think we all struggle in ensuring that our forms are uh, fillable. So this tool can help um, with ensuring that, it, that those fillable forms are fully accessible. So that being said, those are all of the slides I have. I'm gonna hop out of here and jump into the actual tool to kind of run through a couple of samples. Okay. 
So here is Comlock Online. As I said, it was or it is a cloud-based tool. So you're able to access it from home, at work, uh, both, wherever you are uh, working. I am going to start on the support tab because I do think um, it's really, really important. So I did click on support and all the way down at the bottom of the page, I did say that it is a uh, easy to use tool and that's true. Obviously we're here to, to support you. We want to, we want to ensure that, that, that you know how to uh, use the tool to maximize its abilities. So there are some articles here to kind of help you along the way. So in terms of, you know, working with chemistry, working with forms, you know, lists, math and tables, there are some PDFs here to help you um, along the way. So, so, so just remember, you know, support tab all the way down to the bottom uh, if you're struggling on some sort of uh, uh, equation. Okay, uh, here, the support feature here. So if you're filling this out, just know, I think the only important part to mention here is we built this tool 100% in-house. Uh, and we've been around for, for, for many, many years. So when you do fill us out, you're uh, dealing with us directly. Transcription. So this is your main page here. <clears throat> so this here is where you're able to keep track of all of the work you're being done. You're able to keep track of the upload date. You're able to keep track of the file name, the original source file, the intended output, the status of that particular file, as well as you're able to come back here and download another copy at any given time. So if you have a colleague who, who said, oh, I want another copy, come back here, download it, give it to them. Um, and another great feature they have here is the edit again feature. So if you run something through for large print or for PDF and it, and it doesn't pass or it just doesn't meet your expectations, you can come back here and hit edit again so you're basically, you're not starting uh, from scratch. Okay, so that being said, I'm gonna open up a file. I'm gonna show it to you first. So this is the file we're gonna demo today. So it's a two page file. I mean, it's a very simple file, but it does have some key features, which I wanna kind of walk through. So it does have a fillable form at the top here. It also has some various heading levels. It has a paragraph, it has a table, has an image. Um, it does have a paragraph with inline math. So it does have math kind of within a, a, uh, a you know, a text field. It does have a standalone uh, equation. It does have a list, uh, footnote, and it does have a list that spans two pages here as well. So uh, we're, kinda, we're gonna work on that together to ensure that that becomes one list and not two lists. So that being said, I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna hit start new. So any new transcription job, I wanna hit start new and I'm gonna drag this file over, drop it in here. Okay, so first thing it asks, document contains math content. So uh, it did have some math in it. So I wanna to toggle this and say yes, because uh, if I do select yes, the system will auto or will attempt to auto detect the math. If I select no, it won't auto detect the math, but obviously there's ways to uh, grab the math if we made a mistake and hit no. So I'm going to hit yes. So again, these are all of the options. Since I did import a PDF, I have so many options. I have Braille, I have accessible PDF, I have e-text and I have large print. So for this one, I'm actually gonna start off with large print because that, that, that is a format we get asked a lot to produce. And again, remember, this not only is large print, but it's an, also an accessible large print file. So it is gonna be tagged accordingly. So a few uh, details we're able to provide here, export images in, I mean, we have the option of grayscale and color. Let's select color, <clears throat> page size, um, I'm going to select letter and I'm going to, and I'm going to hit next. Okay. So now it assessed the file. You cannot upload an image based file. That's really, really important. Um, so if you do have an image based file, you'll have to run it through some sort of OCR technology 
um, before uploading to the site. So basically you just wanna be able to access the text. So now it is uh, trying to detect all of the regions and assigning all the tags. So it did its thing. So um, typically for large print, obviously you don't need alt text, but I do wanna show you that it is not only uh, large print, but it's also an accessible file. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna just select yes and clarify the page elements. Um, I wanna say yes to that too. So I'm gonna hit next. What the system's gonna do first is it's gonna pull out all of the images. So if you had one image, it's gonna pull out that one. And, it, it, and, it, and if you have 10 images, it's gonna pull out all 10. So it does give you the ability to enter alt text for all of those images by the arrows here uh, on, the, on the right hand side. So I'm gonna enter some alt text here. And obviously I would elaborate this if I was doing proper alt text for a student, but life cycle of a fern, let's just call it what it is. Um, and you do have the ability to ignore the image as well. If it's just not relevant, doesn't add any value. So I'm gonna hit next. Leave image descriptions and continue to next step. Yes, we've entered all of the alt text that we need to. Okay, so here is the main page. So this is where I wanna focus our time. Left-hand side are the warnings. So unidentified content, kind of mid-page, you kind of see a red uh, squares. So it missed this entirely. So we wanna make sure that we capture that. And also this down here, suspicious paragraph. This here is a footnote. So we wanna make sure that we uh, um, you know, properly tag that. Okay, so starting from the top, what I wanna do is start from the top. That, that's kind of the nice workflow. That's the way I like to do it. Start from the top and work our way down. So this one here uh, in H1, that is in fact correct. You, you should only have one H1 in a particular document. So moving on to the next one, uh, H1, I wanna make sure I switch that. So in order to switch the regions or the tags, all I do is hover over top of the region and I click. And you'll see kind of a menu bar up here. These are all the options I have from page numbers to footnotes to table of contents, indexing, chemistry, equation, text, headings, lists, images, and tables. Um, so those are all my options. So for this one here, I'm gonna hit heading and I'm gonna hit H2. And then moving our way on down to the next one. H1, I'm gonna label that as an H3. We wanna make sure that we maintain the proper document structure because we understand how a screen reader is gonna navigate this file. Now the next one is text. <clears throat> and the next one, this one here should be an H3 to stay consistent. Now if I hover over top of the image, it does show the alt text that we entered at the beginning. So life cycle of a fern. So, uh, so, so the alt text that we entered does stay intact. Tables, it does a really nice job in terms of recognize the uh, tables. I know this is large print, so I know this is going a little bit deeper, but again, let's not forget this large print file is also an accessible file. So these are all things we have to look out for. So table headers are there. Uh, so the system does auto identify those, which is great. One thing we wanna make sure that we capture is if, if you recall, this 25 did span across um, two columns. So I'm gonna make sure that I highlight those two columns and select merge. So you do have the ability to do some editing here up top to ensure that 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 this accessible version, this this accessible large print version, uh, mirrors the the original. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm happy with everything it did there. So I'm gonna hit close. This was one of the warnings. So in order to capture this one, I want to draw a box with my mouse around it. I want to let go, and my toolbar is going to appear. And now I'm gonna hit text. But one thing I also wanna make sure I do is I wanna make sure that I capture the math content within that uh, paragraph. So in order to do that, I'm gonna re-click on this region that I just created. Now I wanna hit edit inline and I'll blow this up for you here so you can see it. But now what I wanna do is again, I wanna draw another box around this. I wanna let go and now I wanna hit equation. And now you're gonna see the equation description kind of auto-populated here, which is a pretty cool uh, feature. 
So I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna hit close. I'm gonna zoom back out here. And then what I hit now is the next equation. So this one here, um, since I did toggle the math on at the very beginning, that's why it did select the standalone math equation. Lists, lists, um, it does a really nice job actually in, in terms of lists. It, if you did have a nested list, it'll recognize that obviously as well. And you do have some editing capabilities um, here as well. So I am going to hit close. The next uh, item here is the footnote. So I want to click on that. I want to tag this as a footnote. And the next one here is the header. So I want to make sure that this one here is an H2. And before we move on to the list, I want to show you uh, the reading order. So um, reading order is really, really important. Uh, so we want to make sure that the reading order uh, is accurate. So the system will uh, come up with what it thinks the reading order should be. But let's say we don't agree with what the system picked up. We can easily change this. Um, and what it'll also do for our large print file, it'll move things around. So it'll literally move uh, a, a section to a different area of the page, depending on the reading order we choose. So let's just select here being the first one. Now, all I'm doing is I'm clicking on these boxes here to identify um, the reading order that I want. So when we're done that, I'm gonna hit next because what the system wants us to do is we're clarifying the elements here. So we're working on the suspicious um, um, or warnings first. So now I'm going to say, yes, continue. I've, I've, I've kind of dealt with everything I need to deal with. Now it's gonna give me the option to do a full document review. So at the beginning, if you recall, this is a two page file. So now this gives me the ability to, to go page by page by page. So I'm gonna hit next. Okay, so nothing would have shifted here. So ba basically the only thing I didn't show you was the second page. So I wanna make sure that, that, that we capture that, but especially the list here. So if I go back to page one and I hit this connections button on the right-hand side, this allows me now to connect this list <clears throat> with the list on the second page. So now I hit list item and I hit confirm. So now the beautiful thing with this is that um, this list is one list versus we don't want two lists that are on two different pages. We want one list that spans multiple pages. So now I'm gonna hit uh, page elements. I wanna make sure that all of the regions are in fact correct. So this one here to stay consistent, I wanna go H2 text. I want to verify the reading order is accurate, which it is. And once we're happy, what I want to do is I want to hit end review. Yes, continue. Download. Oops, it's opening up on a different screen here. Let me just bring that back. Okay, so this is what we generated. So again, it is large print. So it's 20 point font headers. It is 18 point font. It is high contrast. It is truly representative of a reflowed large print file. But the bonus to this is now that um, it is fully accessible to a screen reader, sorry. So now I'm actually gonna run a screen reader through this just to kind of show you for those who've, who, who probably haven't heard of a screen reader read so something before, I'm gonna run uh, NVDA and watch how it kind of Pain. reads this file. Ex chapter, student name, chapter 10 STEM test. Scientific method. And what Experimental I really want to question, show you a scientist is the footnote. See, footnote area edit link footnote 8 section 1 1 the type of ferns used in the experiment were link footnote 8 western sword fern, polystichum munitum. 
So it was great as it did pick up the footnote and read it accordingly. Now I want to show you the, the uh, math content all as well. Doc Three, all ferns were grown in greenhouse with the force of Earth's gravity, G equals 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 N superscript, ever present. And then moving our way down to the next one. The fraction with numerator x to the nth power and denominator x to the nth power equals x raised to the m minus n power section 1. So there we go. Not only do we have a large print accessible file, but it reads the math content, which is the huge bonus. bullet at the end of the experiment. Obviously, it reads um, the bullets. And that's basically all I kind of wanted Next to demonstrate. Desktop window. Um, with one, this show, one. Show, sentence, NVDA, just... NVDA, exit, exit, NVDA, oh, okay, see. Sorry about that. So that is kind of, you know, how we created not only a large print file, but an accessible large print file and uh, a file that the math content itself is accessible as well. So that being said, I have one other uh, sample I want to show you today, and that is a chemistry one. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to hit finish because we're done with that particular uh, transcription job. And I'm going to start a new one. Now I'm going to grab my chemistry file. I'm going to drag it over here. So obviously I want to say yes. Now with this file here, I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker because I think you kind of understand the concept of it. I just want you to understand and to see uh, how it handles the chemistry um, portion. And we probably won't have time to get to it, but the Braille, I just want to click on this. If I did want to select Braille, um, you do have the option here and there are some functionality here. So you can add double spacing, you can turn, you can toggle on and off um, the Nemeth code. Um, so these are the features if the output is Braille. But for this one here, again, I do want to select a reflowed large print. And this time, maybe I'll go grayscale. I'm going to select letter um, and I'm going to hit next. Now, again, I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. So I just want to get to the chemistry portion. Okay. So again, this is how the system picked up the file. So again, you know, there's warnings on the left-hand side. I mean, we can, you know, go through proper document structure. Um, I'm not going to necessarily do that. I just want to show you the chemistry part. So I am going to draw a mouse over this. I'm going to let go. And now I'm going to hit chemistry. So if you notice on the right-hand side here, it does come up with the chemistry uh, description on the fly. I'm going to hit save. And again here, I'm going to do the same thing with my mouse, draw a box around this. I'm going to let go. I'm going to choose chemistry. And again, our chemistry description is on the right hand side. And this field is editable. So if you did want to change anything regarding this uh, description, you're able to do so right here. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit next. Because again, it wants us to clarify the elements first and then give us the opportunity to do the full document review. So again, everything's going to stay intact. But I want to show you something else on this page here. So I want to make sure that I capture this element, move that to an equation, hit save. I want to keep this one as an equation as well. But the table, so we do have some formulas and, you know, chemistry in the table. So in order to, to, to ensure that the screen reader reads this properly, what I want to do is I want to click on this. I want to hit edit inline. And again, I want to draw boxes around this. So I want to draw a box. I want to let go and I can hit equation. And... I want to capture this one. I want to let go and hit chemistry. And hit, you know what? I'll do one more here. So I'll do two rows. Hit equation. 
Let's save. And now finally, the last box here, hit chemistry, auto populates the um, your description, which is a huge time saver, obviously. And I want to hit save. And then I want to hit close this. I mean, we could verify the reading order and so on. You know, I, I don't think that's really what I want to walk through right now. I want to make sure that you understand and you hear for yourself how it handles the chemistry. So I'm going to hit end review. I'm going to hit confirm. And I'm going to download. So grab the file. Okay. Perfect. So again, this is your accessible large print version. And now I'm going to run NVDA because I do want to show you how it captures the chemistry. Methanol. 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 Allian. Image of CH4O. This molecule has one carbon atom, four hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. C1 has three H atoms and is single bonded to O2. O2 has one H atom. Graphic selected. Here, I'll do one more here Sel on the left-hand side. Oh. Ethanol, ethyl alcohol, C2, eth unselected. Image of C2H6O. This molecule has two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. C1 has 3 H atoms and is single bonded to C2. C2 has 2 H atoms and is single bonded to O3. O3 has 1 H atom. Graphic selected. Layout okay, so options. Kind text of wrapping. You that. Now, do you want to show you the equation? Image. If A G N O sub 3 plus N A C L, then A G C L plus N A N O section 1. Table with four rows and three columns out extract of methanol items view show and NV ex, exit I, okay Ali. Okay, so my apologies for all that NVDA talk there, but I think it was just really, really important to show you how a how a screen reader is gonna read a file, because that could be the very first time you've heard a screen reader read something. Um and it does show you how to how it handles. Um, math and chemistry. So I'm going to hit finish here. Now we do have a few more minutes. So I'm actually going to spend the last demo on how to remediate a uh, PDF. So again, I'm going to hit start new. I'm going to go grab that file that we worked on together the very first time. And again, all of this functionality is going to be the same. So I'm going to run through this really, really quick. But again, you know, the options of this tool, the flexibility, large print, e-text, accessible PDF, Braille. So I'm going to select accessible PDF this time, and I'm going to hit next. Okay, so being an accessible PDF, alt text is extremely important. And again, it's going to want me to clarify uh, those same page elements. So I'm going to hit next. The functionality is exactly the same. So I want to say the life cycle of a fern and hit next. And again, it's going to pull out all of the images that the system uh, detects. So yes. So the only other thing I really didn't show you um, originally was the fillable form part. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I kind of want to start there. I'm not going to spend too much time on these because we've already, I think, addressed those. But I think it's important to show you how it handles a fillable form. So I'm going to hover over top of this region. I am going to click on it. And I want to verify that it picked up the right field type, which it did. It picked up text box and the field tooltip student name. So the warning here, verify form tooltip, that's just alluding to this area here. So the system's smart enough to, to, to pick up that it's a fillable form. Just it wants us to confirm that the tooltip student name is in fact correct. So in this case, it 100% is. So I'm gonna hit save, I'm gonna hit close. And then just like the large print file, I wanna start from the top and work my way down. So header one, perfect. 
This one here, I want to change this to um, an H2. This one here, I want to change this to an H3. Uh, text, I want to change this one to an H3. Uh, tables, the only thing I didn't show you with the um, tables actually is again, it does auto populate your table headers, your row header. Um, you know, you have the capability of doing some editing here. But if the table didn't come in properly, let's, so let, let's just say it came in like that. I can drag from the left-hand side this little arrow as well as you have the same functionality at the top. You can drag over a line to separate out um, the rows and columns. So uh, I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit close. This one here, I am going to, again, draw a box around it. I'm going to hit text. Again, we want to make sure that we capture the math content. So I'm going to hit edit inline. And I'm going to draw a box around this. And I'm going to hit equation. Save. Uh, list, nothing to do here. This one here, I want to make sure that I um, take it as a footnote. To stay consistent, I want to make sure that the heading levels are accurate. So this one here should be an H2. Reading order, I want to verify. I won't go through this. I think you totally understand um, the flexibility and the ease of use here. Um, but again, you have full control over the reading order and it's really simple um, to do. So I'm going to hit next. And now I'm going to do the full document review because I want to verify um, page two. So I do want to look at this page here. So list uh, H2. And whoop, one thing I want to make sure is the connections button. So I want to make sure that that this list is connected um, to this list here, which this time the system picked it up on the fly. So this little arrow, this little purple arrow on the top uh, left-hand side is uh, the indicator telling you that this list, here's the indicator as well, is now connected to this list here. So the last few things I want to do is verify the reading order. The reading order is in fact accurate. So I'm happy with it. So I know I went through that really, really quick only because it's kind of the same process. Um, but now at the end, I can hit end review. And I want to confirm yes. And now it's generating my uh, accessible PDF. So now what I have here um, is a fully accessible PDF. And now what actually I'll do is I'll just show you that it is accessible. Give me one sec here. So now um, if I drag, I just downloaded this file. We just created this together. But now on the left-hand side, you'll see all of the tags. So you'll see uh, the heading level. You'll see um, the, the H2, the H3, the paragraph. You'll see the table. So, so you know, here's proof that it does handle the table um, quite nicely. One thing I, else I want to show you is um, uh, the list here. So it does handle uh, your list here. And I'll go a little bit deeper here. So you do see the LBLs and the L bodies. Um, so it does recognize those um, accordingly. So with that being said, that's all of the time uh, we kind of have for the demos. I wish I had more time to kind of walk through um, everything else with you today. Um, but maybe I'll leave it there. I do see some questions. So maybe if you do have questions, maybe put them in the chat. Here, let me, let me, okay. So, um, the first question, can the program produce contracted Braille, uh, or uncontracted Braille? I mean, the answer is yes. Uh, if you do click on that tab within the tool, uh, you do have the flexibility of selecting um, contracted Braille or uncontracted Braille. Um, 
What if the student required a larger font size? Great question. I love that question. Um, the standard export is 20 point font headers and 18 point font. If you did want a larger font or even a smaller font, I mean, the good news is it exports to Word. And then from there, I mean, half the work is done. I mean, all you have to do is basically change the font size. So the answer is yes. Uh, and because it does export to Word. And then from there, you can change it to um, whatever you want. Uh, next question. When remediating a PDF, <clears throat> how can I ensure it meets compliance? Great question. Um, we actually have a free download on our website. If you want to go to Alliant.com, um, there's a free download of Common Look Validator. That will validate um, your PDFs against certain compliance to ensure that it's that it passes. So um, to answer that question, yes, go online, go on Alliant.com and uh, download that tool. It's free. Uh, I do see I, I do see some anonymous uh, questions. So maybe I'll park those for those. Maybe just send me an email. Um, I'll go to the next slide here. But send me an email. Um, I'm happy to answer those questions. I don't know really who they're coming from. So just send me an email. I'd be more than happy to answer those um, questions. And that's all the questions I see. So again, I really appreciate the time. I know your time is valuable. Um, again, appreciate everybody being here today. Great to see some names. Um, and if you have any additional questions, I'm always around. My contact information is on the screen. And I'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions after the web webinar. Have a good day, everyone.